Flowers, who is a recent graduate of the BSD. Oh, no, not graduate. Not graduate. In, in the BSD. Oh, yes. in, sorry. I misunderstood. He's in the BSD program, but not freaking out about midterms at the moment. Uh, they should be a little. And reading books about Spain. Born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. And he's going to describe for us and show us a, an environment management tool by the way. So please welcome Justin Flowers. Hi, everybody. Uh, I've been working at CDOT for about six months using Vagrant. Um, yeah, what? Oh, uh, so yeah, I'd like to just figure out, uh, who here has heard about Vagrant? And who here uses Vagrant a lot? Okay, good. Uh, yeah. So before we begin, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our agenda for today. Uh, I'm going to start by describing what Vagrant is and how it does what it does. I'll then be moving on to how to use Vagrant, and we'll be talking about some simple functionality, like uh, importing boxes, using boxes, and making your own base box. And then I'll be describing why Vagrant is valuable, so talking about why it's powerful and why it should be used. So, what is Vagrant? From Wikipedia, the definition is a software that creates and configures virtual development environments. And it can be seen as a higher level wrapper around virtualization software. In English, virtual development environments really just means virtual machines. A higher level wrapper really just means software that knows how to use. And virtualization software would be basically VM providers. So VirtualBox, VMware, those sorts of things. So we can translate this to Vagrant is a software that creates and configures virtual machines. And it can be seen as a software that knows how to use VirtualBox, VMware, and et cetera. So what is Vagrant really? It is a wrapper for VM providers created by HashiCorp. It provisions and configures and imports and exports VMs. And it does this with the same process across multiple operating systems. So what is provisioning and configuring? Uh, essentially, configuring can be seen as setting up the VM's hardware. So this would be anything from allocating memory to allocating storage to allocating CPU cores. Um, oh yeah, and setting up any sort of the network. And provisioning can be seen as setting up VM software. So this would include installing any programs or services you need, working with any uh, configuration files, and running any scripts necessary. And it deals with importing and exporting. Uh -oh. Importing would be bringing in a pre-made machine, and exporting would be making a pre-made machine. And because we're working with uh, virtual machines here, it can be any operating system with any software that's supported on it. So what does all this mean? This means that Vagrant knows how to use VM providers for you to allocate memory, to configure networks, and to run your own provisioning scripts. So essentially, Vagrant knows how to take your VM with installed software and give it to someone else in the exact state. All you need to do is tell it what to do. So here's an example problem. Jack is a web developer at Up the Hill Inc. And he needs to get his working LAMP stack onto Jill's machine. Uh, LAMP is Linux running Apache, MySQL, and PHP. But Jack is a bad employee. Jack doesn't remember what Apache modules he's using, his MySQL database setup, or where any of his dependent services are installed or configured. So what does he do but use Vagrant? He decides to install Vagrant and VirtualBox on both machines, and he tells Vagrant how to configure and provision his environment. He then exports his machine and gives it to Jill, who imports his machine using all the definitions that Jack gave. The whole process takes an hour when it would normally take weeks of environment setup, and Jack is considered a huge success and given a great promotion at Up the Hill Incorporated. So how does Vagrant really work? Well, it uses two files to provide this functionality. It uses a single format .box file and a Vagrant file, which is essentially for configuration. 
The, uh, the box file is a, is a VM container. It's the result of an export and what you'll be importing. And if you want to control Vagrant, you'll be using a command line interface. And you'll be using this to do everything from import and export boxes, to turn on and off boxes, to connect to boxes with SSH. All the user needs to define is the Vagrant file and ship it with the box, but we'll be going into the details about this a little later. So, how to use Vagrant. We're gonna start in this section by discussing some essential commands. Then we'll start with the impressive easy side of Vagrant. So importing a box and using boxes. And then we'll move towards the more complicated part, which would be making your own base boxes. And uh, a quick note about Vagrant. Uh, it works by creating a hidden .vagrant folder. This uh, .vagrant folder stores all the information it will need to connect to your machines and configure them. So it's very important for Vagrant to work. And it's located wherever you import a box. So for example, if I need a CentOS 6 minimal box, I'll make a directory called CentOS minimal, go into it, import my box, and then perform all my commands from that folder. So the essential commands you'll need are a vagrant init, vagrant box, and vagrant up. The whole job of vagrant init is to create vagrant files. If you call vagrant init and then box name, it will just create an empty vagrant file that defines the box name in that file. Um, and if you do vagrant init box URL, you can load the vagrant file for a particular Atlas hosted box, which I'll be describing in a couple of minutes. The vagrant box command is incredibly important. It allows you to manage your boxes. So uh, this command is used to add, remove, and list your boxes. And vagrant up is the most important vagrant command. It uh, creates and configures machines. So basically, uh, it tries to create the machine if it's not already been created. Then it configures port forwarding for the SSH. It tries turning on the machine, tries connecting to the machine, and then once it's connected, begins provisioning. So first thing we're going to be talking about is importing a VM from Atlas. So Atlas is a HashiCorp hosted Vagrant box repository. So they, they have a bunch of different Vagrant boxes with a bunch of different operating systems and software installed on them. It's easy to search through and even easier to set up boxes locally. All you need to do is use a two-step process, Vagrant init and Vagrant up. So let's go on the internet, discover some Vagrant boxes. Does, uh, does anyone have a favorite operating system? Slackware. Oh man, if they don't have Slackware. Okay, we got some Slackware. <laughs> okay, just copy and paste this command. Where am I? Okay, let's make their Slackware. Spell it right. Wait a minute. Chris Marchietta, what's happening? <laughs> uh, I was I was in a screen there. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so now I've got the Vagrant file. Uh, open it up for you guys. The only thing that Vagrant init has done is set this line right here, config.vm.box. Now by calling Vagrant up, it will start downloading the machine and install it. But that's going to take a while over Wi-Fi, so I'm just going to move on while it finishes that. The other way you can import a VM is from a box. So this would be essentially taking something your friend gave you and getting it working on yours. So in order to do this, you must have a .box file with its corresponding vagrant file. Uh, the box file is called a base box because it's where you'll be starting from to install. And uh, again, this is a really simple two-step process. Vagrant box add and then vagrant up. And it couldn't find the host there, but 
just trust me, that does things. So I've got this CentOS minimal box with the Vagrant file. Uh, in order to find out the name of the box, I can open up the Vagrant file. And this line right here tells me the name I'm going to be adding. Excuse me. So I can do Vagrant box add CentOS minimal. So that's the name. And then I give it the file I'll be using. I don't know why it says downloading. It's, it's local. But uh, there we go. We've added the box. Now it's as simple as calling Vagrant up. And it will begin setting everything up. So as you can see here, it configured port forwarding at the beginning. And then uh, it started turning on the machine. Right now it's waiting for the machine to turn on so that it can connect via SSH. It's all ready. It's doing some provisioning, so uh, mounting some shared folders. And the box seems to be working. Uh, and if I'll prove that to you, open up VirtualBox, and you can see there's a machine called CentOS Minimal that's running. And no, that wasn't there before, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, no, that, I didn't finish installing that. It couldn't find the host, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a magic trick, eh? <laughs> uh, OK, so we've got a box. And we've added it with two really, really simple steps. So now you want to use the box. And this is just as easy as it was to bring in the box. You can start boxes with Vagrant Up. You can stop them with Vagrant Halt. And you can basically do a reset with Vagrant Reload. Connecting to them is incredibly simple, because you can just use Vagrant SSH. So now I've got the box running. I'm in the boxes folder, do Vagrant SSH, and I've connected. I'm now running uh, CentOS 6 point something. If I cut out CentOS release, see it's CentOS release 6.5. I'll just do a uname minus R. I seem to be running a kernel, yes. Yeah, and it did uh, everything regarding the provisioning for me and configuring. So uh, working with Vagrant files. If you want to do any sort of changes to the machine when it comes to the network configuration, you will need to go in here and do some changes. So uh, the Vagrant file is traditionally written in Ruby. And it can, like I said, it can be used to control port forwarding, internal network setup, uh, VM memory, storage, CPU allocation, and provisioning scripts. So uh, for those of you who know Ruby, this will be pretty easy to read. Uh, essentially, we've got a, a loop declaration at the top with a config variable. And config can be accessed anywhere inside the, uh, inside the loop. You can ignore the loop for the main part, though. Essentially, you're accessing uh, properties of config to change. The most important ones would be vm.box, vm.network, vm.provider, and vm.provision. So box simply sets the box name. So this is how you'll be talking with, the, uh, talking with Vagrant about it. This will be its label in Vagrant. Uh, network is used for any sort of uh, network configuration. So here I've got a forwarded port from 22 on the guest to 22222 on the host. And uh, provider gives you access to the provider, so you can control stuff there. In this case, this is where you would actually specify the name inside VirtualBox, the like memory allocation and stuff like that, and yeah. So this is uh, this is examples of provisioning with a Vagrant file. There's uh, three different well, there's lots of different ways you can provision, but the three most important would be file, inline scripts, and external scripts. Uh, scripts. So uh, file allows you to simply copy a file from one location to another. So in this case, I'd be copying my SSH config on the host to the SSH config on the uh, guest. For the next example, I've got provision shell inline. So here, 
the, the point of the inline is simply that you can define the script inside the Ruby file and then call it inside there. So in this case, it would just echo hello world. And external allows you to make a script on the outside and point your vagrant box towards it. So in this case, uh, after it's uh, connected, it will run script.sh. And now for the fun part, making your own base box. Making a base box is essentially taking a regular VM that's not associated with Vagrant and ex exporting with Vagrant. So to, there's three steps for this. You'll have to set up your VM, configure your Vagrant file, and then create the .box file. So to set up the VM, uh, you'll have to do a few things. You'll have to create the Vagrant user, give the Vagrant user password list pseudo privileges, and optionally set the Vagrant user's password. Uh, its convention is to make the password for a Vagrant user Vagrant, if you're gonna be passing it. But uh, you don't really need to do that because we control it through SSH keys. And you'll need to copy over the SSH public key, uh, the SSH insecure private public key pair that Vagrant uses. So if we wanna do that, let's, uh, let's make a machine. So for this one, we've already got the Vagrant user set up, but we will need to actually give the uh, SSH key pair again because Vagrant essentially changes... Oh, the, uh... oh yeah, sorry. Um, I believe I am. Yeah, so I uh, SSH into the VM. Now I'm in the VM, uh, and I need to change the public-private key pair. And the reason for that is, and I did it again, the reason for that is when Vagrant detects the insecure key pair, they uh, come up with a new one and put that onto the box. So this is pretty simple. You just go to your good old friend Google. until I've been here quite a few times. And really just copy and paste it in here. So now that we've done that, we should uh, install some software to make this box different. So we'll install uh, Apache. Okay, HTTPD was already installed. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened. That's cool. But yeah, we have HTTPD now. Actually, let's, let's install something even more important. Vim. <laughs> yeah. What's it stand for, Chris Marchietta? <laughs> it's VI, and I think everyone here knows it. <laughs> okay, so we have Vim now. I can go vim, and I make files, cool. All right. So we have done two steps there. We have installed the software we need, and we have set up the insecure key pair. Um, now would be the time to configure the Vagrant file if you're going to be doing anything crazy. Um, things you would have to consider setting up the Vagrant file would be how you need the box networked, uh, if you need any sort of port forwarding to access your services, or uh, if you need any fancy provisioning scripts to get this box to work the way it's meant to. So in my case, I'm just gonna copy the Vagrant file from here. So let's call this new box CentOS better. copy the other Vagrant file here. And now that we have a Vagrant file here, let's change the name on the inside.
This tells VirtualBox, or sorry, this tells a Vagrant what to label it as, and this tells VirtualBox what to call it inside. So yeah, the last step in this process is to actually create the box. So to do that, you need to find the VM name in the provider. You have to have a, divine, a defined name in the Vagrant file. You should really double check everything else just to make sure that everything is working. And then it's as simple as running a Vagrant package command. So if I open up VirtualBox, this is the box we want to use. We know its name is Vagrant or CentOS Minimal. Uh, if you've got a really complicated name, you can use settings and copy and paste this text box. But since it's really simple for us, we can just do it off the top of our heads. So I do vagrant package. Oh, actually, before I do that, I should stop the other machine. It's going to try a graceful and it should fail. Why not? So I'm going to package. I'm going to give it the name inside VirtualBox. Feed it to base. And then I'm going to give it the name I want it to output to. So I'm going to say CentOS better dot box. So now this is working exporting. That's going to take a minute. So I'm just going to continue and then come back. So let's talk about why Vagrant is valuable. It's powerful. Complicated VM setups can be defined simply. And complicated VM, VM setups can be, more importantly, automated. It's really fast to set up environments to work with Vagrant, to import and export environments with Vagrant, and to control environments. And it works identically across platforms. Additionally, much like Docker, it eliminates the works for me problem. If you have this configuration and it's working on your machine, it must work on other people's machines. It also provides source control of the VM setup. So the Vagrant file can be added to project repos and tracked. And as the developer changes the configuration, they can keep up to date. Additionally, uh, branches of machines and Vagrant files can be tracked. So this includes provisioning. And finally, it ties together other automation technologies. So you can bundle Chef and Puppet installations in a box and have them be called at the beginning by Vagrant. So why should it be used? From a system administrator's perspective, it's, it's pretty apparent. It makes system setups which uh, work across all platforms. You can quickly get access to pre-built vanilla machines from Atlas. Uh, you have automated control over the configuration of the machine, so including network control and resource control. And you have uh, automated control over provisioning of the machine. And it's a fully disposable environment. For the developer, it gives a simple modular way to control dev environments. It gives you easy cross-platform environment modifications, so not all of your programmers have to work in the same environment. All changes are tracked by version control, and it's a quick process to get the environment up to date. All you'd have to do is a git pull and a vagrant up. And most importantly, it allows a programmer to focus on programming and why it should be used for designers. For designers, it allows them to perform powerful environment setup with two commands. It's not a huge amount of options, so the designer, it's not as easy to make mistakes. And uh, it's easy to pick up with no learning curve. There's uh, also a series of time savings in uh, getting complicated environments together and fixing environments which are out of date. And just like programmers, it again allows designers to focus on designing. Go back to this terminal. OK, we've got the exported box. Can you show the size of that? Uh, yeah. It is half a gig. 
Okay. So, does anyone remember the process for adding this? Because I forgot. No. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you'll do a vagrant box add. You'll give the name that you define in the vagrant file. In this case, I know it's CentOS better. And then uh, I know the name of the box is CentOS better.box. Let that add. Do a vagrant up. I'm sorry? So that all has to be installed as well. Uh, what has to be installed? Yeah. CentOS better, uh, sorry, uh, the base box minimal has to be installed. Or the yeah, so in, in this case, I am taking the base box I just made, where I installed uh, Vim, and I, am, I just exported it, and now I'm bringing it in to show you that when we connect to it, it will have Vim. So I thought that the box you created actually was better, not uh, it, it did not need to create that uh, CentOS uh, minimal. So I took CentOS minimal. And, oh wait, where do you see? Importing base box. Oh, that's the startup of CentOS. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm importing CentOS better here. Yeah. So I took CentOS minimal. I set it up the way that I wanted it to, and then I took an image of it and put it into CentOS better. So now I'm, I'm importing CentOS better. It's all up and running. I can SSH in. And before, I kept getting hit by uh, doing Vim and then a command, and it'd say, or a Vim and then a file, and it'd say, hey, you don't have Vim, you can't do that. But now, I can do Vim hello, and it's actually there. Yeah. <laughs> and the question in the first place is, why don't they have them with CentOS? Jesus. Anyways, sorry. So what's the conclusion from all of this? Vagrant is a wrapper for existing VM providers. It deals with the automated configuration and provisioning of machines, and it has simple exporting and importing of machines. It uses Vagrant files and .box files, and it's all about the automation of setup and time savings with setup. Vagrant lets you import boxes easily with Vagrant box add, start up boxes easily with Vagrant up, and control the setup of a box with the Vagrant file. It also allows you to export VMs with pre-installed software very easily with Vagrant package. And finally, Vagrant will help you Bring your environments up and take them down. Share environments easily. As an operator, it will help you make environments simply. As a developer, it will help you track environments with versioning software. And as a designer, you will never have to worry about environment setup again. And that is it. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Go ahead. So I'm having a hard time understanding how much of the configuration of your machine was done manually in the VM and how much through Vega. Because it looks like pretty much all the config was done manually, right? Uh, configuration for? You just went and installed Vim and configured Apache and what else you've done in there. Oh, OK. Vega didn't do that. You just no, uh, but Apache is already installed. Well, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, Vega essentially took the commands I took for setting up uh, like memory and CPU and used that. Uh, I probably should have used an inline script to install that to prove it. You're right. Uh, but uh, essentially, Vagrant did a lot of work for exporting the box and bringing it in for me. So what so if, I, if I don't use it and you do, where do you save your time? Uh, it's more for much more complicated setups. So for example, you say you've got, a, for example, at, at CDOT, I've got a, an a Apache load balance that I use. And I've got to set up a bunch of ports to, to get that configured. So I've got to like 
take port 80 and route it to my host's 8080. I need to get it onto a host-only network. I need to give it a specific IP on that host-only network. I need to make sure that a, a bunch of uh, scripts are run before, like just basically to make sure everything gets started up in the right order. And that would save all my time because I could define all that in the vagrant file and then do vagrant up. And more importantly, when I want to give it to Edwin or Jay or anyone else that I've worked with, I can just do a vagrant uh, package, get that box, give them the box with the vagrant file, and then for them it's just as simple. They just do vagrant up and they don't need to know about any of the magic that I did in the uh, configuration. So when you say it's version, you don't mean the configuration of this VM, but the actual contents of the current version is defined as blob, right? I'm sorry? The actual configuration inside the virtual machine is a blob that they don't know nothing about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I've got about the query. Yep. So I have a question is, uh, let's say you, you, you use CentOS 6, mm -hmm. and you've installed uh, your services and all that, and you created your virtual box file. So in a sense, you've created a snapshot of a VM, and that VM is available for you to come back to later. Yes. So the question is, what if I wanted to have exactly the same kind of VBox file, but I wanted it to be always updated with the latest version of the of OS, and then still keep the latest version of the services? OK. Um, so would they, would, would, a, uh, would they even be able to do that from? I believe so with Atlas. So there's, uh, there's commands that allow you to update with Vagrant. So you can say when a Vagrant file is changed or a box is changed. So uh, for example, if I, if I get a box from uh, Atlas, which is why I sort of wish that uh, Slackware worked, but um, basically anytime you do a vagrant up from a box that's from Atlas, it will tell you it's checking for updates, it's seeing if the vagrant file has changed or if the actual image for the box has changed. And if it has, it will ask you if you want to update that and move forward. So if you need tracking of what type of uh, like a history of your box, and uh, like maybe someone else is working on it and you, you're not sure if it's the most up-to-date, you could host it off Atlas and have uh, have the changes tracked there. And the other question is, I have to trust whatever's on Atlas. Uh, well, you could use your own machines, and you could you could set it all up yourself, and you could use Git to to track the vagrant file, and if you even wanted, you could have Git track the uh, the box to see if the image has changed. Uh, yes. Can you have multiple? Um, I know you can use a single Vagrant file to configure multiple machines. I'll have to get back to you on if you can use a single box to contain multiple machines. That was my question. Can you do it at the same time? Uh, do what? Configure to, um, several virtual machines with the same template at the same time? Yes, you can. Uh, the Vagrant file supports being uh, defining how to set up, for example, say you have a host-only network and you know you always want the first four boxes to have certain IPs, you could define that in a vagrant file and say, for the first box, use this, for the second box, use this, so on and so forth. Um, yeah? Yeah. Um, can Vagrant use VMs created using Hyper-D? Yes. Uh, vagrant supports uh, so many providers, like LXC, and uh, VMware and VirtualBox. Uh, the specifics for that I'll have to get back to you on, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident we're working this effort. Yeah? Um, in the case of all of the exporting a VM made from one provider and then importing it into another provider? No, that, that is against the rules. It can do it across operating systems identically, but when it comes to providers, you would have to box up different, uh, the same box for different providers. Oh, sorry. The, the different VM exports into the same box. So you can, I know you can have one box that has uh, a series of different providers for it. So, yeah. Yep. You know what's possible to integrate with Ansible? Uh, I'm sorry? With Ansible? You know what? Oh, uh, yes. You could uh, install Ansible on the, on the VM you'll be using and then use inline scripts to trigger it. Um, I know there's, there's plugins for Docker and for for Chef and Puppet, I'm not positive about Ansible, but I'd be willing to bet. But it, it can definitely be manually gotten or set up and configured that way. Yeah? You could only understand Linux VMs, like Linux or Get or whatever. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, it uses any Linux, uses Windows, uses OSX. Uh, it understands, it's more like it understands providers, not operating systems, if that makes sense. So, like controlling VirtualBox is the same on Windows, on uh, Linux, and on OSX. You just. Windows guest OS wouldn't understand that distinction. Uh, oh, you mean for guest OSs? Yes. Yeah, oh, okay, I see. Uh, <laughs> Vagrant uses RDP and remote administration for that stuff, so you can't have Windows as a guest OS. Okay, uh, thank you.